Outrocast. Adam, Kimmy, thank you so much for taking the time. Obviously been a long time fan, long time aware of you two because when you were in New York hanging around the Lower East Side and the East Village in the early 2000s, this was one of the bands people talked about. But it's interesting that this new release, Origin Story 94 to 99, 99 is from before all that. So I guess I'll first ask Adam, who led who to wanting to look back and put out some stuff from the past? Uh, well, it, it was ORG Music, the label that's putting it out. Um, they emailed us and said, you know, do you uh, want to release, uh, re-release the X-Ray 7-inch, which was like a old 7-inch that um, that we had put out uh, in the mid-90s, like when I was like 14 years old or something. <laughs> um, and then they sort of said, meanwhile, while we're talking about reissuing this, you know, this record, do you have anything else that is from that, you know, that time, that old time? So I basically went to a storage space uh, and recovered a bunch of sort of ancient tapes that you know were in a dusty box and we like sort of listened to them and I sent Kimia what I thought was kind of cool and then we kind of like pieced together with with ORG music a track listing of you know of music before the Moldy Peaches ever really was ever going to you know we, we were even really like a band you know it's just you know um before we ever really thought anyone was going to hear the music right now now Kimia First off, does that completely jibe with everything that you remember happening? And the second is, did you actually have any of the material that Adam didn't? I had um, some like old, old tapes that Adam had given me back in the day. Um, And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what went down is like we just sort of like I was like a poet and Adam was a little kid making songs and <laughs> and then we started making songs together and yeah it was just it was pretty surprising that ORG was like ah oh, do you have this old stuff and then we just had to dig through dig through and find them but it's it's yeah. exciting to to go through all that stuff and sort of remember you know the feeling of of being like just making music purely for ourselves and for fun and having no audience, but being really creative and excited about it. Right. I'm not sure which one of you is best to answer this next question. Knowing what I know for music industry stuff, sometimes when you sign a record deal, you sort of accidentally sign away your demos or anything you recorded before that label. There's weird clauses like that. Was any of this material tied up previously and came back in reversion deals or was it all free and clear? Um, No, we we had a good record contract, right? Yeah. Um, Well, we've never like done anything that we wouldn't be okay. You know, we've always like really been ourselves and only agreed to, to things that would end up being like, you know, like where we had like an out, like, like, oh, we'll do a seven-year licensing deal. And if we like it, we'll renew it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, good. The, the rough trade deals were actually pretty straightforward. They were they were really f- more than fair. They were, they were, they were, they were, they were fair. That's mm-hmm. not something that you hear every day from artists. Usually it's a, well, we got successful and then we had to renegotiate our deals to get the reversions in there. So it sounds like not a lot of bitterness about the music industry from either of you. Well, I mean, I have some bitterness, but that's, that's <laughs> later down the road. That's not right, dealing right. with the multi peaches thing. I, I just had a one bad experience, but got it. But back right. to the positivity here. Totally. On top is one of the awesome tracks on this, and <laughs> as the line we like to contradict ourselves, which I think that, that states things for years to come. Great reference to Wallbaums in that one. Mm. Then I believe that's <laughs> yeah, the one I where Kimia. We I also. Think we, oh, sorry, we. I think we were recently talking about that that line, right? Kimia, like about the like to contradict ourselves somehow was yeah. like a little bit of the mission statement uh, of, oh. our, of our you know of our band at that point I still th- I still think about that a lot you know like like just you know constant contradiction and mm. it's okay yeah <laughs> the, the end of that track has you basically auctioning off your 1983 converse <laughs> with, a, with a Duran Duran trivia question in there yes. so <laughs> 
I think it's refreshing. I, mean, I feel like so funny. I feel like the way that you do it though is like you're auctioning off your shoe and like you're sure that people in the crowd want it. And, and like, nobody you wants it. it. You, there's like, like there's probably only 10 people at this show and like Kim is just like, <laughs> like, come on, you want my shoe, right? And oh, I'm like, why doesn't anybody want my shoe? <laughs> and what's funny is they were my shoes for when I was like 13. So like they weren't even going to fit anybody in there. It's like a tiny kid. Well, I am. I find that really refreshing because it shows between that, the I wish I was Bentley, that you two were always up on pop culture. A lot of bands don't want to show humor. They don't want to show pop culture knowledge. It's like they want to dumb it down. But from a young age, you weren't afraid to do that. It's cool to see that you didn't change over time in that sense. I think there's always been kind of like ways that we use like language and stuff to kind of flip um, stuff that was like pop culture stuff that was coming our way. Like um, I know that Kimia has a lot of like wordplay of different uh, like, like, you know, names of people, um, yeah. names of musicians. And I don't know. And I mean, I guess like, you know, I had the Jessica song. Um, so yeah, we ha we have had like a lot of different stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. like in, and your art too is is always like kind of twisted pop culture stuff. Yeah. And my solo songs are all pop. Like the early stuff was so much pop culture reference that now when I play my earlier solo songs, none of the kids who come to my shows know the reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would I would imagine there's not a lot of kids knowing who Captain Lou Albano is, but. <laughs> you look at a track like that and you had Brian Danielson on about seven years before he became cool and mainstream. <laughs> yeah. It was... also, you know, like I would learn about, I'd learn about stuff from Kimia, like, you know, like those, like some of those old cartoons that she lists and uh, nothing came out. Like I didn't even know those cartoons. I mean, uh, shirt tails. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even really know what that is. I don't know shirt tails either. I know duck tails. What's shirt tails? Shirt Tales was like these animal buddies and they all had like t-shirts with different messages on them. Huh. Come on. You, you remember. <laughs> it, that sounds like Captain Planet uh, in a way. Yeah. Okay. I remember that. I remember that. So another cool thing about listening to this album is a lot of venues that stuff was recording at don't exist anymore. And when I think back to you guys, the Luna Lounge, the Sidewalk Cafe, it's, it's kind of a relic or a time capsule in a way in some way is that depressing or is that cool to know that you've been around and been to all those places while you still could be there um i mean i feel sad that that like the sidewalk cafe is gone you know like but at the same time like i hadn't been there and and i live in seattle now so i hadn't been there for a few years and and but I know people in New York would still go every once in a while or somebody would play a show and all the old pals would go <laughs> and, and watch them. And so it's like, it's like sad, but yeah, I'm really grateful that we happened to land there at the time we did. Cause that was a really special time for that community. Yeah. Makes sense to me. When did you both start? And I, I think I'm going to get a different answer in this one. If you look at where we are in 2021, the Strokes are as cool as ever. And so many from the, uh, the bands from that original scene that I was just talking about are back. It's like they never went away. Maybe they're playing to bigger crowds than they ever did. When did you start to notice that the Moldy Peaches were not just cool again, but that if you do announce a gig that people are going to come and you don't just have to do the old material per se, you can be a current band? You think? I think so. Yeah, we haven't proved that thesis. <laughs> that's well, that's in theory still. Well, no. there have been gigs over the years. You know, it's it's not like, hey, we haven't played yeah, together yeah. in 18 years. We're on the same. No, and it's like, there. I mean, it's it's really interesting because like some of our songs are like super like anyone else but you is super viral on TikTok. Like like, yeah. like kids on TikTok love that song. But I went a couple weeks ago to see Princess Nokia play. And she and I are friends and she started singing anyone else but you on stage and all the audience was singing along. And so I hadn't like connected with her yet at the show. So I was like trying to get up to the front to like wave to her and everybody was pushing me out of the crowd while singing <laughs> anyone else but you. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's awesome. They know the song, but they don't know who it is. You know, they don't know who I am. They don't know who it's by. They just know it like. Well, some people know it from Juno. Some people know it from 
from TikTok, but either way, it's like divorced from me and Adam. You right. Know? I mean, I also knew it was kind of big. Remember that time when they were they were trying to get it? Oh, they they were trying to get it on American Idol. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. like it was like um, I don't know, maybe like six years ago or something. They they wrote us about how they wanted, but they never did it, right? Yeah, it was only on the French the French version. <laughs> okay. Well, in the, your defense, the, Kim, the first they... lady, the first lady of France, sang it yeah. on the French version of American Idol, Nouvelle Star. Wow! Hey, accolades are accolades there. But in your defense, though, <laughs> people may not have known you live in Washington State. In other words, they might go, "Yeah, that's a person." Yeah. Whereas, if that same thing were at Webster Hall, I think people would have had a little more context. Yeah, I just thought. I, I mean, I wasn't. I thought it was hilarious. Like, like that's sort of. Cause I'm like, you know, I'm going to be 49 in a couple of weeks. And so I was like, Oh, who's the old lady? Like trying to, trying to get to the front, you know? So it's like, to me, it's just comedy. Like, like, you know, that, that the music is still like reaching the kids, but I'm just, yeah. Like, <laughs> we kind of have like, kind of theorized that it's, it's like just sort of like hanging out in high schools or something. Like our record is, is like, just, there's like kids who turn like 14 or something or 15 and then they, kind of get in contact with that album and and play it and then that's sort of part of like that that kind of development hmm. but um so it, it just seems like um yeah it's like it's like a, t- a teenage record or something it you know continues to be that way yeah i feel like that like the moldy peaches album is to like this time period kind of what i mean you know it feels weird to make a comparison but to like me and my friends in the eighties, what like the, the violent femmes album was where it's like some older kid like hands you this album and is like, Oh, you should check this out. And you don't know when it was recorded, what the people in the band look like. You listen to it in the car and you scream along really loud, but (laughs) but it could be, it could be current. It could be like 30 years old. Nobody knows. Mm. You make the perfect analogy right there because the Violent Femmes songs were big hits among people I went to summer camp with. And you sh- if you showed them a photo of the Violent Femmes... They wouldn't know who it was. Right, right. Really good point right there. So does that give you hope to doing what ABBA is doing right now with <laughs> sort of avatars, the animatronic-like things that it's what they represent of them visually, but not exactly them? Well, I don't know yeah, anything. I didn't, I didn't even know about that. that. Because I know they were like retiring or something, but I, I didn't know that they didn't already retire okay like, i'll uh, explain what they're doing and then you'll tell me if you think okay. that this is appealing <laughs> so abba made a new album cool that's great better than no abba album and it's a live performance thing where they've actually built the arena themselves you have to come to them like a vegas residency except it's in europe and they are projections that are non-3d of the members of abba so you're looking at animated composites of the members of ABBA representing them their younger selves while a live performance is going on. Could we see that from the Moldy Peaches? Hmm. That's weird. Yeah, because, you know, I think that we like the idea of kind of like, if we ever did anything again, kind of doing it really old and like have it be like we were a kid band and then we're like a senior citizen band. Yeah. And then we just think it's funny to like miss out on the whole like middle, middle like, like Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. That's a deep thought right there. So this compilation is new to me. You know, I had not heard this material before and I'm glad that I have now, but to you, I'm sure it's old. And Adam, you've made, I think you can hear it in the sound quality. Cause when we, I remember when we were uncovering these tapes, like for example, the opening song, wake up and I like, I played it and it was like, like it just like the sound of the tape warming up. And it was like, I was like, wow, this thing was like, I mean, I actually just said this on an interview the last time, so I'm sorry for plagiarizing myself or whatever you call it, repeating <laughs> myself. But I, I was saying it's like, it almost sounded like it was like recorded on, on like a rubber band or something. Like it really sounded like, like it was just like on some tape strip of like ancient time and it was like playing. And I was thinking, wow, like we really used to record all these songs on these sort of like, you know, wound up pieces of like stretchy rubber and like, uh, you know, and you can really hear it, um, how it's not a recording made, you know, now. And it, it's, it kind of affected me emotionally to hear it that way. <laughs> like just the, 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 the texture of it. 
Well, I can understand what you're saying right there. During the pandemic, uh, the quarantine process of it all, I unearthed a bunch of interviews that I taped when I was 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, these terrible interviews with celebrities at the time. And I was listening to these old cassette tapes that I recorded on speakerphone off a uh, mini recorder. And (laughs) you don't play them for 20 years. And that's probably comparable to what yours sounded like. Yeah. (laughs) I've been excited, though. I, I, you know, dusted off the four track that we recorded a lot of that stuff on on Origin Story like some of that was recorded on this four track and I have the same microphone from back then. And I recorded a song on it recently. And then I was like, Oh, I don't even have the right cable right now to like plug it into my computer. And so I I put the headphones into the four track and then stood my phone up in the headphones and did a voice memo of the song off of the four track. (laughs) And I was like, oh, it's, it sounds so good to me. But I sent it yeah. to a friend of mine who was like, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so but I love that sound. I love the tape, like yeah. old tape sound. So it sounds like a good mastering engineer was needed for this album. Um, yes. Um, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we, we did. We did actually. Um, and I didn't do it the mastering in person because um, we, uh, you know, we weren't allowed to do that during COVID. Um, but I believe... Um, it was um, Sarah Register. That makes sense. Hmm. That that uh, is a really good name for a mastering engineer, Sarah Register. <laughs> uh, let me let me make sure about that. Sorry. Well, while you're doing that, uh, what I was complimenting both of you on is a lot of bands would just put out an old compilation of material and go, "Hey, cool." So that's what you got. But both of you have stayed active in forms of collaborations, guest appearances, Adam, two movies of yours over the last decade, the 2019 album. So I I was curious if you're allowed to say what's next. And that's not me fishing for reunion stuff. It's are you recording stuff or was it kind of a creative drought during the pandemic? Oh, no, I've been like writing and recording the whole time. You know, it's. I just, I have a 15 year old and I just have been kind of not wanting to, like, I still like up until the pandemic, I was playing shows and doing some tours, but then I've just really wanted to chill out. I got really sick at the beginning of the pandemic for Mm -hmm. about six months and, you know, kept writing and recording through that. And then the two shows that I've played since the pandemic started, the two like in-person shows, my kid sang with me at my shows and and we've done some writing together and we did some virtual shows together. And so it just, it, it feels like a cool time to like sort of step back a little from like uh, the, the chaos of going out on the road and like letting my kid be in high school and have friends and yeah. then sort of like evolving my my music stuff to like involve you know my my kid which is really exciting yeah i can imagine that's an exciting thing to also see what uh, what genes, what, what genetics has been automatically picked up by your child versus lessons? Now, in your case, were there music lessons? There were some like voice lessons early on, some like a little bit of guitar, but nothing like, you know, nothing too advanced, you know, just like in elementary school, a couple lessons, but it's really natural. The songwriting is super natural where I was like, I'm going to retire because you just <laughs> outwrote me. <laughs> Adam, are you keeping your offspring away from music? Um, well, I mean, you know, they, they're they they're younger than Kimmy. I was like a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. And they just like, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know, the songs from uh, Pokemon and stuff. <laughs> um, but uh, I was just going to say that, yeah, by the way, I checked that there was Sarah Register that mastered it and she did a great job. And um, and also that what Kimia said about um, getting sick during, I mean, uh, she didn't have COVID, but, you know, being sick during quarantine, um, like the, the, the record actually took a really long time to put together because Kimia was having like a really rough time. So we spent, uh, I don't know, 
like what was it Kimmy? like like nine months picking out the track listing yeah it was it was like, really long yeah wow. and I, I i may have had covid it was right at the beginning of the pandemic and my stuff was all like gastrointestinal so they yeah. weren't testing for that yet like it was i was sick at the point when they were just like do you have a cough do you have a fever then you're fine you know yeah. So was really, I was really, sick. Really. I was really, really sick. And then I was in the hospital. So, so Adam would be like, Hey, can we do this? And I was like, nah, I can't move. You know? <laughs> she'd be like, I'm okay. And then like, I'd be like, okay, well, what do you think about this song? And then she'd be like, I'm back in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously oh. glad you're doing better. It yeah. sounds like you're oh. back to normal. Yeah. It definitely like gave me some perspective though. Like the pandemic has given me that like, I just want to hang out with my family and like with my kid. And in a few years, like I will have a child who's like, I'm moving out, you know? And so I'm like, you know, people who want to come see me play shows will hopefully still want to come see me play shows in a few years, you know? For sure. Well, I, I mean, what I said, I think if you announce that gig, it'll go clean, maybe not three minutes like the Strokes Irving Plaza, but you'll be surprised that when people can't see something for a couple of years, they want it. Yeah. I mean, my solo stuff has been good, like all along. Like I can, I can go out and, and do solo stuff, but I, I really, I know that if we do a Moldy Peaches show, I get emails all the time from, Mm -hmm. from Robert Johnson with Scenic. And he's just like, he's just like, put me at the head of the line, like moldy peaches reunion, you know, I'm the guy. <laughs> I'm just like, I can't promise you anything, Robert. You know, he's been doing that for like 10 years. Like, yeah, we, we get some offers sometimes. And, you know, and also I, I tour, um, you know, under, you know, by, with my band, like, uh, yes. as solo as well, but, but I was going to say that also, I was going to mention, um, cause you were talking about other things that are, that are coming up as I have a graphic novel that, um, I just finished that's coming out in a few weeks, uh, that's published by pioneer works in Brooklyn. Wow. And the graphic novel is uh, Subcultural Karate Turtles. It's my own <laughs> versions of Ninja Turtles. Um, but the turtles are subcultural. And um, the uh, they have to sort of battle against the mainstream uh, that is above ground to determine the direction of the future of art. So no pizza? There's some pizza in it. Uh, oh. And I, I edit, I, my, my wife, uh, Yasmin, uh, e- edited the book. So we worked on it together during the quarantine. And then I drew it with... Toby Goodshank, who was in the Moldy Peaches with me and Kimya, and also Tom Bain. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. I look forward to seeing that. Well, the last topic I have for you guys is random and, and nothing to do with the excellent origin story 1994 to 1999. So you got to keep the plugs going and all that. And that is <laughs> when we listen to this great compilation, we hear all sorts of genres. We even hear hardcore through the song Punching Bag, per se. Mm-hmm. Were either of you, though, Van Halen fans? Van Halen fans? Um, bon Jovi more like. Yeah, I mean, I can like, I can, I could rock just a gigolo, you know, all the way through. But I know that wasn't like their song. But but I, I, I liked that video. I liked the jump video, but. But yeah. I I wasn't like a fan, fan. Yeah, yeah. Like I I think I like I like I like um you know, lo, you know I like like uh, looking on YouTube and watching it. I don't even really remember it so much from growing up. Wow. So now I know, Adam, your friendship with Steve Schultz is n- in no way based on appreciation of hair metal. <laughs> I I, I, I am a you. huge Bon Jovi fan though. Wow. Okay. I'm like learning- when I like when I'm anxious, I look up, I Google. Bon Jovi gifts and then I just look at like a whole screen full of pictures of him just like moving a little bit (laughs) yeah and it it calms me I feel like one of my first memories of like really enjoying dancing with with people was when somebody played um uh living on a prayer at the boiler room when we were in Washington state Um, yeah that's that's a pretty good song um but like yeah I mean I, I think I grew up listening to like you know, for me, and you can see on this origin story, because it's like when I was so young, but I, I really liked Beck and Nirvana and, you know, and Ben Lee, um, you know, who we mentioned in the song and sort of do a yes. parody of his song on this record. Um, but yeah, like stuff like that. But yeah, so hair, hair, hair metal, not so much. Yeah, me. I mean, I, I listen to like, 
like all kinds of music. I was like really into Metallica and suicidal tendencies and Cat Stevens and and Phil Collins, you know, like I just like covered all the all the bases. Yeah. Like, Kimmy really likes classic rock. Like enemy. Loves, loves like radio. What? Yeah, I so said you really like like the like just like the ra- the radio. Like I like listen to the radio all the time. I yeah. love the radio. Like I yeah, I, I know all the like like I know the current pop songs. I know the the TikTok trend songs. I can do some of the dances. <laughs> I just I just like I like the stuff. You know, I I like things. I like watching movies. I like listening to music, and I'm not picky. You know, mm. I I enjoy like taking taking things in well then that gets me excited that there will eventually be a covers album in some form from <laughs> you two or one of you two that has bon jovi and public enemy and wow all over the place but in the best possible way so i can't thank you both enough for your time and yeah. really do uh, looking forward to seeing one or both of you live in new york in the very near future in some form Thanks. I wish I had a teleportation device. I would be there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Keep it up. Keep up the greatness there. Take care. Thank you. Bye.